All right, guys and gals, for the second project, which actually probably has less labor in it, but is more complex, after doing the first video as a walk around, I decided to break this one into two, um, two videos. I'm gonna do this first video walking through a sketch. The sketch is not to scale. It was uh, more effort than, than desirable to put to scale. So I'll do this video, then I'll, I'll walk through the project on the property independent in a second video. So if you're watching this video, there is a second video available in the video notes right down there where you can see it. And if you're watching that video, there'll be a video that has a notes that points back here. So this is going to be a duck feed and composting system. It's also going to grow trees. It's going to grow uh, food for other fish and other aquatic systems. It's going to grow crayfish also for us and for other fish in the system. It's going to be Pretty cool. This is one of the more complex function stacking uh, systems I've ever built. It all starts off from a standpoint that I learned about a plant called water hyacinth. I've known about this plant for years, but I learned that it's actually excellent livestock feed. Beyond that, I learned that ducks in particular love it. Chickens like it too. Goats like it. Almost everything that humans raise as livestock likes to eat it. But ducks eat it, and they eat the roots of it. It also has protein equivalent to soy, and it's not soy, so that's a good thing too. So it's a high-protein feed for ducks, and it makes exceptional compost, as most aquatic plants do. So here's our compost pit. So the goal is let's grow some water hyacinth, let's feed it to ducks, let's feed them in a location that where whatever they leave behind, uh, combined with kitchen scraps, carbon sources, etc., naturally compost and when it's full we just empty it out pile it up let it finish and start the process over again so that would be simple i have all kinds of ponds everywhere that can grow water hyacinth and they will and that'll get fed to ducks and composted too etc but this is an integrated system right here is where the ducks live this is that building you've probably seen in many of my videos i call it the duck house here because that's who lives in it is the ducks and a few chickens that sits here this is south north east and west on this map and i needed to lay it out this way i like my maps to have north up but this will make more sense laid out this way so now we have our compost and our ducks cohabitating with each other They're right next to each other we need a place to grow the water hyacinth this is an eight by 16 foot and that is drama scale sort of uh miyagi pond so just like my other timber frame ponds the difference with this pond is it's low to the ground. The whole depth of this pond is only going to be about 17 inches of water. Plenty for what I want to do with it. And a lot of surface area. 8 by 16 is huge. We don't have any pressure worries with the sidewalls at all, though, because it's only going to be about two timbers high. The rest is into the ground, lined with a liner. So now we're right here. We're able to just, if, we did, if all this was was a hole in the ground with water in it, we could throw some water hyacinth in it, and it would start growing. It's, it, you, you can't not grow the stuff, right? If, you, if it gets a start, it's going to grow. I can stand here with a pitchfork, and I can dip in here with a pitchfork and flip it right over into the compost pit without taking more than a half a step. And I guess once I clear off this end, you know, you'd have to pull it down, but I don't want to ever completely empty it anyway. So as it fills back up, Drop it over, feed the ducks. Fills back up, drop it over, feed the ducks. This stuff grows very, very fast. And we will have it elsewhere, too, if we need more of it to feed them with. So there's your pond. Now you get your pond, your duck house, your compost pit. That's where a lot of people would stop. The thing is, this stuff grows really well on high-fertility water. You know what makes water highly fertile? Duck crap. You know what ducks like to do? Get in the water and crap. So up here will be a roughly, I think I figured out, about a 55-gallon uh, container of water. And I'll, I'll talk about what it's being made out of when I walk you through the project outside. And it's going to sit here slightly elevated. I'll show you how I'm going to do that outside. Just understand, it's high enough that water, when you open a drain, will be able to drain from here to your pond. Pretty simple. So now you got ducks water. They get a, a full day to use it. You open a valve. Water drains into the pond. Now you got duck poop in the pond, but the only thing we're growing in this pond is minnows and maybe goldfish as feedstock for my other fish. And every time that water comes into this pond, it's going to create an overflow event. All right? Now see how cool that is. Now we're pushing this high fertility water into here. We're creating an overflow event. Now what happens next 
is there's going to be pipes that lead down grade. So this is, again, this is north going this way, but the slope is this way, downhill. So this water will feed by gravity. It will overflow from the pond at two different points. One pipe will deliver water all the way to this bottom swell, one to this top swell. And by putting the overflows at an even height, the pond will overflow equally into both pipes, thereby sharing the water equally between the two swells. The swells will be built a little bit different than is typical. It's pretty shallow soil, but it's incredibly fertile because seven years of ducks being held in here. And for five of those years, it was a lot of ducks. Their fertility has bled down in here. So this is incredibly good soil. We'll excavate these swells. These will not be big swells. They're hand dug, about like a sidewalk in width, right? And nice and flat, very low berm. But right where these trees are going to go, there's going to be four main trees planted into this system. We will cut basically a little dry pond, call it. And when this water hits and discharges here or here in the center, it will spread equally down the swales and it will fill these ponds. These trees will be planted behind those little ponds. I kind of will make a little plateau back here to plant them in. Basically, we're planting the rain in the words of um, uh, Brad Lancaster, right? But we're planting the rain and then we're making our own rain with duck poop water. So that feeds these swales. They do their part. Now, you're probably thinking that's a lot of duck poop going there and that's a lot more irrigation than those four trees probably need. You would be correct. So the next question is, what else can we do? What else can we do with that water? Well, my wife happens to love willow trees. And you can't give a willow tree too much water or too much fertility. It's impossible. So what we're going to do, we're going to plant a willow right here. Now, these are fences. So the thing here that keeps the ducks out of this area, there's a fence and a gate right there. So the ducks can't get there unless I decide to let them in. And at certain times of the year, they'll be let in. We'll talk more about that in a second. So that pipe brings water there. So all we're going to have is three valves back here. If I close this one and open this one, it waters that willow tree. This willow tree is actually inside the duck holding area, and it's designed to shade the ducks and give them shade in their holding area. We've got another gate right there. So this is all closed. You doesn't see where it's closed in, but this is all, when these are closed, the ducks are held in this area, and they sleep in the house. So now we're watering the two willow trees, and we're watering this system down here. And if that wasn't enough... I have a stand from when I used to keep bees that's 12 foot long. 12 foot long is the distance from the back door. Of the, there's a little door right here. If I don't want to let them through this gate and I want to put them out here and I want them to definitely go out here, I can open the back door to the duck house. This stand is like, it was like it was made for it. It goes right here. I have three fiberglass tanks that are about 150 gallons a piece. They're going to be plumbed common level right here, elevated above this pond. There'll be a pump in the pond for recirculation, and one of the things that we'll do is pump water from the pond to these three tanks, which will then discharge back into the pond, creating a loop like many of my other systems have. These ponds will be for growing out crayfish. Crayfish that will be started in tanks indoors. I'm using a, a crayfish called a marble crayfish, which is self-replicating. I'm also going to have crayfish in here too, probably. We'll see how that goes. But the hope is to be able to put, produce enough crayfish in here to take out to other systems and thereby help feed my fish. Also, these are edible crayfish. They're a bit smaller than your Louisiana style, but there's a lot of problems they solve from something like this. Initially, I have down here all pipe is two inch. I kind of looked at the specs, looked at everything, looked at the cost, and one, I'm actually going to go with one and a quarter pipe. I've already got everything uh ordered two inch swing valves tend to stiffen up over time and where you need a pipe wrench to turn them so i think one and a quarter will work fine for doing this drainage and i have a way with my air compressor to blow these pipes out when and if they become gunked up it's really really easy to do so that solves that problem uh next up then we're going to have this area here and here and then past here by the trees this is what we refer to as the inner swell you can do Three things with inner swales. You can fill them, so you can plant a bunch of trees, turn the whole thing into a forest. I'm not going to do that here. I want this open. I want this to be a camping area. You can crop them, which is what we're going to do, and I'll tell you how. We're going to do it Fukuoka style. Or you can graze it and maintain it with perennial grasses. And we're going to sort of hybrid that. In this inner swale, I've got well pump water right here, so I can irrigate when I need to in my driest part of the year. Again, you're getting a lot of infiltration of water into this soil system anyway. We're going to plant this with like millet and buckwheat, which are very drought resistant, very fast turn crops in our summer, which is long. We should be able to do three crops of that. 
that's feed to the ducts. Everything the ducts don't use, scythe to the ground, dropped, that's going to create a mulch. Right before we scythe it, we'll put down the next sowing of the crop, and then when we get into late fall, we'll, we'll, we'll do barley, just like in my gardens for a cover crop. We'll do a barley crop. That'll take a much longer uh, cycle into early spring to be ready to harvest. We'll take the tops off, reserve that for duck feed. We'll go ahead and go back to our millet and, and uh, uh, our millet and buckwheat and probably cowpea uh, mix that we'll be growing here as our summer crop, and we'll just keep repeating that cycle. It's very, very Masanoba Fukuoka style, sowing one grain crop into another different application of the same thing. So now what we have here is we have a system that produces goldfish and minnows as feedstock for other ponds. It produces crawfish for humans and crawfish for feedstock for other fish and other ponds. It produces feed for ducks in the form of a high protein water plant. It makes composts for gardens. It waters a total of six trees, two ornamentals, and these are actually probably going to be more ornamental than productive down here. There will absolutely be other productive species in here, and unlike my other parts of the property, since the ducks won't be in here all the time, they won't be able to do too much damage, and we'll be able to do some shrub growth in here as well. That's it, guys. Is that enough, though? Isn't that amazing? And we have some other things that we may be doing with some arches. We'll probably be doing some things that shade these tanks, because since it's on the south side, they're going to get blasted with sun uh, in the late summer, so I've got some plans for that. I'm probably going to use some scrap material to do a shade uh, roof over the duck pond right here. Um, but this is going to be great. There's water. There's a water line that runs just like this from the well. And there's a hose bib right here. I'm just going to splice into it and come right up to here and have a hose bib just sitting over top of this tank. So there won't even be a hose. All you'll, all you'll literally have to do to service this every morning is you go ahead and open the, whichever valve you want to put the water to on that day, and then turn the water on. But my buddy David came up with something even cooler. Instead of a hose bib coming in from the top, we're going to have another swing valve coming in on the side here that brings the water in to what will look like a spray bar in the bottom of the tank with all, all of the spray going that way. And then the drain bulkhead in the bottom will be over here. That way, when the duck poopness is all over the bottom of this tank and you fill it back up, you leave the valve open to drain out to one of your three spots, and it, it self-cleans. And that way, if we're like, hey, you know what? We need more water here right now. Well, we can come out in the morning, just let that run for about five or ten minutes, and then go ahead and close the valve, fill it up. We can even put some sort of float valve arrangement on there where you can walk away from it. It'll turn itself off because I do have a tendency to forget things. But all in all, this is an incredibly simple and incredibly elegant system. And we're doing more and more right now to try to figure out how our own land and our own systems can feed the ducks. And here's the really cool part. Probably and the initial install, since there's power right here and it'll be easier, we'll just use a plug into the grid pump. Long term, I want to swap it over to a solar pump. A buddy of mine named Hog Eye showed me how to do that. For 200 bucks. I can have one direct solar panel to one direct pump down here, and this will run all day long. There's plenty of lift in that pump all day long, any sunny day, and at night it'll just shut itself off. That's plenty of cycling, and we could even go ahead, and since we do have grid here, to kind of supercharge things, throw some air compressor bubbles into these three tanks. Really, really easy. Uh, do that on a timer, uh, and do it at a time when it won't really disturb the ducks. It's going to be awesome. Check the next video. I think if anything's confusing, now that you've seen this, when I walk you through the site, it'll make a ton of sense.